Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my aggressive casino heist guide. In this video, I'll be showing you all kinds of tips and tricks on how you can complete the aggressive casino heist as effective as possible. And since I've already done a guide on the big con heist and the silent and the sneaky heist, which, by the way, if you haven't seen it, there's an eye in the sky that will guide you to them, I'm going to be using some footage from those two heist guides that I already made, because there are a few things in this heist that are similar to the other heists as well. So I'll leave timestamps in the description down below so you can go to those timestamps for new information. First off, let's start with the crew we're going to be picking. For the gunman, we're going to be going with Carl once again. He is going to give you either a shotgun or a revolver. However, we're not going to be using any of those two weapons because during the finales, we'll actually be giving an SMG, which is the weapon we want to be using. So you'll be wasting your money if you'll be picking anyone else. For the driver, we're going to take Kareem because he takes 5% and he has four good vehicles that we could be choosing. My personal preference is going to be on the Sentinel Classic, why I'm going to explain later. And thirdly is the Hacker. Now the Hacker is something you want to be taking Avi Swartzman for or Paige if you don't have him. If you want to unlock Avi Swartzman, you need to collect all 50 signal jammer. Now luckily for you, I do have a guide on this which I will link in the eye in the sky in the top right of the video which will guide you to a guide that I have done on it so you can collect all 50. This won't be taking longer than an hour or two and you'll be able to have even more time inside of the vault which is going to be very vital. More on that a little bit later. So once you pick your crew it's time to go and do the prep missions. Now a couple of important things. If you want to do these prep missions as quick and as effective as possible having another friend with you will be extremely beneficial and will make your life a lot easier. Having said that though if you don't have this playing all these prep missions so is entirely possible. You don't actually need another person, it's just a lot more convenient. The only time you're actually going to need someone in order to progress is going to be during the finale. For the very simple reason that if you don't have another player, you won't even be able to start the finale. So with that in mind, the footage you're going to see has been played with two players in mind. The only difference that you're going to experience doing this solo is that sometimes you're going to have to go back and forth twice in order to get all the collectibles. Like for example with the getaway vehicles because you're going to have to collect two. And yes, you are able to do all this stuff in private sessions. You don't have to be in public sessions in order to do both the prep missions and the finale. So that's a very nice thing about this heist. All right, so let's get into the prep missions themselves and the tips I have for them. Starting off with the four missions that you don't need to do. These are the following missions. The masks, the power drills, the patrol routes, and also the reinforced armor. Reason four that you don't need to do the patrol routes compared to the two other heists is very simple. You'll be literally blasting your way into the vault, meaning that patrol routes are not of the essence at all, because you're simply going to shoot everything that moves. Patrol routes is only useful in the other two heists because you can see where the enemies are. If you're someone who wants to know where the enemies are during the first stage of the heist, then this could be something that you would want to do. Personally, I don't think it's worth it, especially if you're following my guide. Reinforced armor could potentially be marked down as a maybe. If you're a lower ranked player, I would mark this down as a definite yes, because this is going to give you more health. You'll be able to be protected against more bullets. But personally, if you're someone who already has full health, which is about rank 135, and also has the capability of getting all the armor at that same rank, what you should be doing is just simply leaving the reinforced armor and just simply take body armor and snacks with you. If you're not familiar with how to do that, if you go to the ammunition, aka the gun store, you can buy armor there. You should be giving the super heavy armor, which is the very last one, for about 500 bucks each. You can hold up to 10, and then for snacks you can go to any of the convenience stores. However, keep in mind for the P's and Q's, you don't always get a full supply of them, and you might have to go to multiple stores or use your CEO office or facility in order to be able to get full snacks. P's and Q's you can hold a total of 30 off, so keep that in mind as you're buying them. And with all those missions ignored, it's time to start looking into the missions you actually should be doing. First of course is going to be the unmarked weapons. Now the choice is going to be entirely up to you here if I'm honest. Personally I say that the Sauna Shotgun is the better option out of the two, but the Revolver could be something that is useful for longer range engagements. You're not going to be doing an awful lot of these longer range engagements, but if you're looking to be extra careful, that Revolver is going to be a pretty useful tool if you aim for the head. Keep in mind though that being able to fire your next shot with a revolver does take a little bit, so keep that in mind as you're timing your shots. 
But either way, you're going to get an SMG during this, so you don't actually need either of those two weapons. And getting any other gunman is going to be a waste of your money. Next up is going to be the getaway vehicles, where you have four different choices of car. Now, personally, I would advise you to use the Sentinel Classic for the reason I'm about to explain. Once you have picked up the Sentinel Classic or any of the other getaway vehicles and delivered it to your arcade, what you want to do is you want to get into the vehicle and then press the right D-pad on console or E on PC. Then you will see a menu which will allow you to upgrade the car. Now what you want to do there is upgrade it to level 3. You could also decide to just go for level 1, which is definitely the bare minimum, but the difference is like 15k, and honestly for the 15 extra k, you're going to get more speed and you're going to be able to just deliver your stuff quicker and start the next heist quicker as well. But it's entirely up to you. I would highly advise you though to at least get the bulletproof tires at level 1. It's going to be a lifesaver. And if you want, you could make your life a little bit easier by respraying the car as well so you can recognize which car you want to use because if you were going to be doing a two-player scenario what you want to do is you want to only upgrade that one car and specifically the green one I mentioned reason being is pretty simple the green Sentinel classic on the back of the car has some protection which means that if you do get into a messy situation the chances of you getting shot from behind and losing value are a lot smaller the other car does not not have this and this is the precise reason why you're only going to be upgrading this car and while you're doing the finale both of you will be getting in that car and simply just ignoring the other car because first of all you didn't upgrade it and second of all driving with two cars is just asking for trouble next up is the hacking device which is a pretty basic mission all you need to do is you need to go to a location find the target kill him and then get the pass for him where you can then access the news headquarters now personally I've tried many times to do this stealthily but it just always seems to happen that they spot you and you get cops on you anyway. So personally, I'd say don't really bother. So when you do get cops on you, it really is just a better idea to just immediately go to the news headquarters. It will save you a bunch of time and on your way there, you should be able to lose cops pretty easily. Pro tip, by the way, since Lester is not going to work in these prep missions, the easiest way to really lose cops is either by going into the sewers or just simply going as high up in the air as you can. If you have an oppressor mark 2 like myself, it's very easy to just go very high up and then parachute down if you want to go down very quickly. Once you reach the news headquarters, you just simply want to head in and try to stay as stealthy as possible it really makes your life a lot easier and it's not that hard to avoid all the people that are looking out for you in order to find the hacking device you need to open your phone and then go to the bottom right where you'll be using the sightseer app the closer you get to the hacking device, the stronger the signal will get. And it's just a matter of finding the hacking device while avoiding all the targets and all the cameras. And of course, you are able to shoot down cameras and personnel with suppressed weapons. Next up is the vault keys. Now the vault keys, there's multiple different ways of how this mission is going to play out in terms of what kind of scenarios, which is the same thing with all the other prep missions. But this one in particular, I want to highlight, which is the one where you have to go and get the prison bus. Now, luckily for you, you don't actually have to get the prison bus which will save you a vast amount of time what you can do is you can immediately go to the prison and then take out the target now, the unfortunate part about this is that you're going to be having some very heavy cop resistance so grabbing a sniper to snipe the target from afar or using an rpg or a buzzer to take down the target with one shot is just something that is really worth considering especially because there is a lot of heavy snipers on the towers which will tear you to shreds if you don't watch out so that's another pro tip for you if you're going to towards that tower watch out for any of the other guards they will shoot you down and as soon as you're dead you're gonna have a very difficult time trying to get back into that prison because there will be a constant four star wanted level on you it's not fun and i speak from experience so try to get in and get out as quick as possible if you happen to die or you don't really have anything to can get you up the tower right away right here is a door where you can go through and then you can go up the ladder and still get to that bodyguard you just shot down now next up is going to be the duck and shipments now this mission is by far the most important mission inside of this heist reason being is that because this is the optional mission that will reduce health to the enemies inside of the finale if you don't do this, you will be faced with armored enemies that also have bulletproof helmets and your life will be in absolute hell. So whatever you do, make sure you get every single target you have to take down during this side mission or else you will be 
miserable. It is possible to do this one solo, but you're probably gonna have to be quick about it because the targets are quite spread out. So what I personally like to do with two players is have one person go down to Los Santos, while I'm personally going down to Blaine County and take out those targets in my Hydra. It's in my opinion the most effective way of making sure that this mission is going well, and if you already got yourself a heist partner, you might as well be doing the prep missions as well. Next up is going to be the Terminal Charges. Now the Terminal Charges is pretty straightforward missions, you just go somewhere, kill a bunch of dudes, get the thermal charges and then run away again. There isn't really an awful lot to it. Obviously in the case of some heavier resistance you want to be using an armored vehicle or anything like that if you're struggling, but outside of that you're gonna be more than fine. For the vault explosives, what you want to do before you start the mission is actually equip a rebreather. Now the reason I'm saying that is because it's a very useful tool and it will allow you to skip one of the sections of the mission which it requires you to grab a scuba suit. Now in order to acquire this rebreather, you need to have completed the humane labs raid finale and then you can buy the ammunition for $5,000 each. Or what you could also do is you could head down to the clothing store or that same ammunition and pick up your own scuba suit to be able to use it during this as well. However, it's going to cost you $155,000 at least, so it's probably a better idea to just take the rebriefer instead. It's a little bit cheaper and it does the same. Now in case you forgot and you're already in that mission, sometimes it is possible to still equip it. It was a little bit weird because one time I was able to do it, but the other time I was not able to do it. So it is very much advised to equip one before you start the mission. It will save you a bunch of time. Next up is going to be the boring machine, something that is not boring, but instead is going to be extremely useful. The mission itself is not very difficult. You just go somewhere, steal a truck, and then bring it to the sewers. Now there's a few tips I can give you with this because obviously if you're stealing a truck with a boring machine, you're gonna get some cops on you. Now luckily during this mission, there's an exception to the rule in terms of calling Lester for cops, because you are able to call Lester for cops at the time of recording. This could be patched obviously later down the line, but I figured I'd just let you know. Another thing they could do to save yourself some time is by going to the sewer entrance immediately instead of listening to the game. Because the game wants you to take a tourist route when you could just take a small jump and you're basically where you need to be going. And then last but most certainly not least is going to be the security pass. All you want to do for this one really is just making sure you got a level 2 pass by seeing this following image as well as this confirmation screen asking you if you want to steal the security pass level 2. A little tip for a mission I happened to come across while I was recording this by the way is the dance party you have to infiltrate. It's pretty simple and you can even use the interaction menu in order to start dancing at random locations to keep your suspicion down. The target you want to be looking for is always going to be past out on the ground. This is always a random target and the picture you'll be getting from Lester is a good enough indication to see which person you're after. And every single time you're funneling someone who is not really noticing that you're doing so will not have to pass on them and the pass will be on the table at the end of the swimming pool. With all the prep missions done, I want to go over the payouts for a little bit and kind of go over the percentages and why exactly we chose the things that we did. Primarily the hacker. Now the hacker is definitely the most important choice you're going to make within this heist. The hacker is essentially the time that you will get inside of the vault. Giving you some examples, AV will be giving you 2 minutes and 30 seconds in order to grab everything in the vault, while Paige will be giving you 2 minutes and 15 seconds. Compared to the 1 minute 45 seconds that you'll be giving to the wannabe hacker man Ricky, which will only be taking 3%. In case of a full take, the difference in cost between Avi and Ricky is a total of $184,000. Now you might be thinking this is quite a lot, however you're getting nearly 2 minutes more to take as much as you can, which is going to be a huge lifesaver and in the end is going to net you a lot more profit than that $148,000 is worth. Now if you don't have Avi or you don't want to bother going for him, the difference in time between Avi and Paige is going to be about 15 seconds. And the difference in price is going to be $20,000. And you might think that pfft, 15 seconds, what I'm going to do in that? Well, actually, those 15 seconds are going to be very valuable. Because in case you didn't know yet, there's three different options for you to grab in when you're in the vault. Which is going to be art, 
gold and cash now these three all have different amount of time that you need to in order to grab everything for art this is going to be 18 seconds for gold this is going to be 25 seconds and for cash that's going to be 38 seconds now these 15 seconds can be very vital while you're in the middle of trying to grab the last bit of cash or gold or art and you're having to get out of there speaking of having to get out of there what you want to keep an eye on is is that the clock is hitting 30 seconds Seconds, you really want to grab the last few things and get out of the vault as fast as possible because if you don't your covering is going to get blown and everything is going to be a lot more difficult than it needs to be so in my personal opinion it is very much worth it to go and unlock av as well as using him in the heist because those 15 seconds can definitely be a lifesaver and the twenty-one thousand dollars really isn't that big of an investment compared to page so with all that in mind, it's time to start doing the finale. The entrance you want to be taking is the sewers because, well, we got the boring machine for that. And the access you want to be taking is going to be the waste disposal. And obviously, you want to be selling to a high-level buyer. When you start the mission, all you really want to do is you want to make your way to the sewer entrance where you will be greeted with a door which will lead you to the big wall which you will explode with a big bang. <laughs> Doing so, of course, is going to alert a few guards who aren't going to be particularly happy with you doing so. So the best way to deal with those is to grab your SMG and start shooting them in the face. Because, you know, that's how GTA works. Now, because you didn't do the patrol routes, you're not going to be able to see where these enemies are. Having said that, though, because you've done the duck and shipments, these guys are useless. Like, dying to these guys, I don't know how you will do it because they're, they literally cannot aim. They're using pistols and they die in two shots. Especially if you shoot them in the head, they're gone in a few seconds. Having said that, though, if you're a little bit more unfamiliar with the game and you want to be extra certain, obviously make sure that you have enough snacks and armor with you, just in case they get a little bit too touchy-feely. One thing you want to make sure of as well is that before you get to the keypads and you start using them, that you clear out the enemies. However, there is always going to be one or two enemies spawning as soon as everyone is killed so once you see yourself a window go to the keypads and take them down these two enemies will be coming from two different direct directions the one directly behind you and the one on the left alley which for what i could tell is the inside of the elevator where they spawn once you're through the keypads it's time to head into the vault where you just place down a few tiny explosives which will blow open the vault door where you'll be walking through and then it's time to go to town now compared to the other other two heists you don't actually have to do any hacking and instead you got two thermal charges now with that said it is very important that you don't waste these thermal charges on anything else but the doors this is the exact reason why you also got the security passes so you don't have to use it to waste it now once you're in the vault you should be immediately jumping towards one of the doors which needs a thermal charge set the thermal charge and then immediately go to one of the other tables where you have to start collecting the loot the reason for that is because the thermal charge is going to take a few seconds before you can get into the door going to another target in the meantime will mean that you'll be able to have more time to collect everything which is especially vital if you with two players if you want to know what i mean i'm showing it all in the gameplay and because of this we were able to take the full take in both the art and also during gold now i'm going to be disappointing you from the get-go because getting everything with you without taking any damage is basically going to be impossible because the ai in this game likes to shoot you the most mysterious ways like in this example right here So I tried my hardest to lose as little money as possible and come up with a strategy that is both effective and also will lose you the least amount of money. When you're starting out at the main lobby, you want to be using the door on your left as cover because as soon as the door opens, there's a guy on the right. Shoot down that guy and then at the distance, you will see two guys standing in the far back alleyways on the left and on the right. Shoot those guys with a headshot of your SMG. When you're done with that, you want to clear out the rest of the room and make sure that it's cleared out before you move up. Once you move up, more enemies will spawn, which you want to throw a grenade at to quickly take them out behind cover. As a friendly reminder, you don't actually have to aim grenades when you're in cover. 
you can just simply press the fire button and it will throw it. Also holding down the fire button of the grenade will also charge the grenade so don't hold it for too long or you'll blow yourself up. One of the most important things you should be doing as you're going through this is taking as much cover as possible and picking your moments when you decide to shoot someone. Another good idea is to have your entire body behind a wall but still being able to see the enemies and shooting them. When you cleared out the first few guys with grenades and taking them out in the main lobby you want to be watching out for the guy standing in the back take him out and then make your move to the next room obviously you want to stay in the middle to be able to take cover behind the wall because there will be a guy on the left as well as another two guys on the right that bastard on the left will always be in that cover meaning that you have to be very careful with how you approach him luckily though we have grenades the quick grenade to his feet will do him nicely and we will show him move on to the next room on the right there will be a guy trying to shoot you as well which my partner in crime got i decided to move to the left to take out the guy from the elevator give him a quick blind fire to the head and then move on to the elevator there's not really any point in taking the stairs for the loud approach because you're not trying to be stealthy so you might as well skip a bunch of stairs and some enemies once you're out of the elevator make sure to keep an eye on your radar to see where the enemies are and then cautiously move out now this is the point where you're probably going to lose the most money reason being is because first of all these spawns are random so make sure to make use of cover as well as grenades you have 10 of them so make sure to abuse them as much as you can as you move out to the next hallway you can use this piece of cover here very nicely in order to make sure that if there are any enemies coming your way they're going to be coming right towards you but while you're in this area you want to be certain that you always keep an eye on your radar because there is a high possibility that an enemy will come behind you to try and shoot you when you're not paying attention once you're at the end of the hallway you want to take the first doors to your left because the guys in the lobby and behind the desk are all going to start shooting you if you go through the second door on the left so make sure to stay that one obviously there's going to be a locked door as well so make sure to keep an eye on your radar that you don't get shot from behind using that piece of wall for cover for both sides is very effective and it did me pretty well once you cleared the lobby enough you want to quickly make your way to the secret exit i'm showing and then you will be outside now once you are outside you're basically immediately going to get shot and you're going to lose a couple of grand i've tried it in a couple of ways but it just seems that as soon as you get in and judging by the footage i reviewed as well you get out you immediately get shot the noose is literally just waiting for you from three different sides so there's not much you can do what you can do though is you can minimize the damage so what you want to do is you want to immediately jump over the fence to the horse track where there'll also be two noose guys hiding behind rocks directly opposite of you shoot those two noose guys and then start running towards your getaway vehicle or better yet start running towards the street where you'll be picking a pedestrian car a getaway vehicle in this case is quite useless the reason for that is because typically it's going to be far away and using the getaway vehicle if it spawns inside of the horse track is just going to ask to take damage and lose even more money so what you should be doing is you should hop over to the street and then take a pedestrian car all the police is in and around the casino so they won't be bothering you you might have to deal with one or two helicopters but as long as you just simply shoot the rotor in the Back, it will be taken down very quickly once you got your pedestrian car you have two different options option number one is the helicopter strategy which i'm not going to include within this video for the simple reason that there is a very high chance that it's going to get patched for that reason if you wish to see the helicopter strategy which of course is going to be the best strategy that you can do i'll leave an eye in the top right of the video so you can check out that tutorial that i did on that with that said for the remainder of the guide we'll be using a car and using an effective strategy to lose the cops that way because once you have your acquired your pedestrian or your getaway car you want to head into the sewers and just keep following the sewers until you're at the end just simply wait there and then make your way out now funny enough during the gameplay a news agent did come inside of the sewers and happened to spot that if you see that happen back up your car and just wait it happened to be a foot soldier and well while we were waiting until we could make our way up he casually walked by and we gave him a little wave and a hunk of the horn we passed him and we wished it a nice day when we get out of the sewers as well you want to make sure you take a look to the left and you take a look to the right or else you're going to have a very bad time like i almost had happened to me the other day where there was literally a cop car right outside of the tunnel 
So make sure to pay attention and make a quick stop before you continue. Once you're out of the sewers, you lost the cops. All you really need to do is make sure you don't actually provoke the cops some more and just simply go to the buyer. And that is all there is to it. Now, my personal opinion about this whole strategy is that I personally don't really find it worth it to be so ultra cautious. During this attempt of trying to be as cautious as possible, having done multiple resets and whatnot, it really is not worth it to be so cautious. The difference between being ultra cautious and just going as fast as possible is very minimum. During my ultra cautious run, I lost about 30,000. During my going as quick as possible and not really caring run, I lost about 60,000. Obviously, I'm a little bit experienced with the game, so if you're not that experienced, maybe being a little bit more cautious it might be a good idea. If you're losing too much money, you could always decide to simply kill yourself and start from the checkpoint. You'll still have the same amount of money. It is nice to you like that. For further information as well, if you're curious about this, every time you get shot, you will lose 0.1% of the current health value in your bag. So say for example you have a full take of art of $2,350,000, you will lose a total of $2,950 when you get shot once. Now obviously when the value decreases, the amount of money you will lose will also decrease as well. So when you're looking at it that way and they're using pistols against you and they're not very accurate, the best way to go about it really is to not to be ultra cautious. You might as well just go as quick as possible and just try to kill them before they even have a shot at killing you. The enemies are no challenge. Challenge. It's not like Doomsday. It's not like Pack Standard. Their accuracy is miles, miles away from what you're used to in those two heists. But that's just my opinion. Obviously, uh, I've shown you the route that is effective to use if you want to take as minimal damage as possible. So it's up to you what you want to do. If you want to go cautious or you want to go fast, it's entirely up to you. This route will do you nicely. But with all that said and with all that done, that was it for this heist guide. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave it a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you all later.